So hi friends, good morning everyone. How are you? So I hope all of you are doing good. Today we are going to start a new batch for financial management paper for ACCA students. Okay. So as you know, this uh, financial management is a hundred marks paper and which is vital to, you know, for any uh, student who is grooming himself to be a chartered accountant or uh, uh, a certified professional accountant or even management accountant. So this uh, financial management is there in all the professional courses relating to this accounting and auditing, whether you want to become an accountant or you want to become an auditor or you want to become a management accountant or a manager, having a good uh, knowledge and skills in financial management is pretty much required. So today, let us start this introduction by looking at the syllabus given by ACCA. Okay, so this will be our, this is our ACCA website. And in this, you can see, when you go to ACCA website, you can see the syllabus. So there are two documents here. One document is syllabus and study guide for September 21 to June 2022. And then syllabus and study guide from September 2022 to June 2023. There are only marginal changes between these two. But since uh, we are in 2022, and I'm making this video on 4th April, so our immediate batch, our immediate batch will be this one, June 2022 exam. If you are writing exam in September 2022 or December 2022, you have to check the second link. So now I am starting with the first link. So I have opened this. Okay. And this is the document. Okay. FM for September 21 to June 2022 students. So let us have a good idea on this uh, syllabus. And after that, we will see uh, with our uh, investment appraisals. So they have given all these things here, intellectual levels, learning hours, education and rec education recognition, the structure of ACCA qualification, all these things you might have seen when you are doing your, your uh, F123 itself. Okay, since already you reached F789 level, I'm sure you have good understanding about what is ACCA qualification, uh, ACCA examination structure, how the papers will be assessed and all these things. Then we have to go to introduction of syllabus nine detailed study guide. Okay, so let us see. I'm not uh, dealing with all these things because I'm sure you have uh, already known this levels and all applied knowledge, applied skills, strategic professional levels, etc., etc., etc. So this is about assessment, how they assess. This is about linkage. So they are saying that uh, the financial management will be useful for your strategic business leader and advanced financial management. So previously last year, you remember you have done management accounting. That is the basis for financial management, which is also the basis for advanced financial management and strategic business leader. So this is very important because both these papers are heavy papers, strategic business leader paper and advanced financial management. Both these are very important papers. So you need to focus on the concepts of financial management more, not just solving the problems. So just solving the problems will not give you marks also in ACC. So then they are giving approach. So they are saying section A, then 15 into two marks, section B will have, uh, you know, five objective test questions. Then section C will have two 20 marks uh, constructed, all these things. This is the examination structure, total 100 marks exam, how section A, B, C will be. This we'll discuss at the end of the batch again. Okay, this is the syllabus, my dear friends. Okay, so these are the learning objectives. Okay, now if you have paper and pen, take paper and pen and write down. A, segment A is financial management function. Okay, have one paper and pen and write down all these things. One financial management function. B, financial management environment. B, financial management environment. C, working capital management. C, working capital management. 
सी वर्किंग कैपिटल मैनेजमेंट वन फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट फंक्शन टू फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एनवाइनमेंट थ्री थर्ड पार्ट और सी इज वर्किंग कैपिटल मैनेजमेंट डी डी इन्वेस्टमेंट अप्राइजल डी इन्वेस्टमेंट अप्राइजल ई ई बिजनेस फाइनेंस ई बिजनेस फाइनेंस एफ बिजनेस वैल्यूएशंस एफ बिजनेस वैल्यूएशंस डी इन्वेस्टमेंट अप्राइजल व्हिच इज लाइक यू नो लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन मेकिंग वी कॉल इट कैपिटल बजटिंग आल्सो देन ई इज बिजनेस फाइनेंस वी डिस्कस अबाउट द सोर्सेस ऑफ फाइनेंस एफ बिजनेस वैल्यूएशंस व्हाट आर वेरियस टेक्निक्स इन इवैल्यूएटिंग अ बिजनेस ओके फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू टेक गूगल एप्पल so uh, frequently we say apple is the uh, company with the highest market capitalization in the world so on what basis the business is valued so business valuation we will learn in f and in g risk management g risk management and then h employability and technology skills g is risk management then h is employability and technology skills okay so guys try to understand a b and h are predominantly theory okay a b and also to big extent business finance e risk management g though there are some problems business finance and risk management also lot of theory whereas working capital management investment appraisal business valuations this three is core problems practical aspects but i'll tell you one very 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 important observation what a student has to understand there is a lot of difference between your board examinations especially you are a student from india pakistan bangladesh or student from uh, nigeria student from uganda if if you are not a student from uh, the eu the uk and if you are not a student from uh, us what happens is in your schooling in your college you might have done a lot of exams wherein the focus is on solving question focus is on solving question but the moment you come to uk or eu european union we call especially acci is a uk qualification right so the moment you come here what happens you know the focus will be more on the analysis interpretation conclusions what kind of inferences you draw and your assessment and your skill and ability of applying a principle in a given situation here no one wants your theory no one wants uh, you know just if you solve the problem and say say for example arr arr of this project annual rate of return accounting rate of return or average rate of return arr has uh, you know arr is known as accounting rate of return or annual rate of return or you can call average rate of return also so the accounting rate of return 22% you calculated do you know only 40% of marks maximum 40% of marks are given for your answer when you solve you know applying uh, some formula you will calculate the answer no 22.5% for that only 40% marks are given that means you will fail 50% is the pass many students fail not because they don't know how to solve so calculation of npv calculation of working capital calculation of business value actually that is very simple actually that is very simple but still students fail do you know why if you look at the assessment more and more and more and more weights weights are given for your interpretation and how you correlate theory with real life practice and to the situation so it is like you know decision you are a consultant you are not just a student who is solving this problem 
so acca they do not want to see you just as a student they want you to be a resource or a consultant who is giving a suggestion to a client so to the client say for example there is project a project b there is business a business b acc wants you after valuing business a and business b what kind of suggestion you will give to uh, your client and also there are certain very peculiar things for an indian student or a pakistani student there are very peculiar things that you have to speak a lot about the environment about the social responsibility about the desirability of this particular project from non financial points of view sustainability ecology okay environment ecosystems isn't it interesting it is actually interesting so guys you need to read technical papers given by acca you need to read case studies not just solving the problem solving the problem solving the problem unfortunately if your lecturer is also from a background where he wrote so many exams which are you know problem solving based even they will drive the batch they will drive your teaching in such a way that calculate npv calculate irr calculate working capital but that is not the end that is not enough you need to be little more little higher so it is very important to attend the classes and learn the concepts and it is equally important for you to download the previous question papers and suggested answers and try to understand how acca is giving suggested answers and how to develop that answers you need to develop the skill you understand so this is our syllabus what is our syllabus our syllabus comprises financial management function financial management environment working capital investment appraisal business finance risk management business valuations and employability and technology skills so this is a 20 marks pdf 20 page pdf i'm sorry not marks 20 page pdf you need to read this thoroughly you need to read this thoroughly so from this page number 11 they have given the details of the syllabus so just now we have seen part a b c d e something like that now in a what will come here the nature and purpose of financial management financial objectives and relationship with corporate strategy which is very important to see do you understand this if you are doing an indian course trust me you will never see this kind of language or this content or this uh, phrase in your whole life you cannot come across in financial management maybe strategic management is a separate paper but the interlinking how financial objectives will help you in achieving corporate strategies this is an interesting dimension this is a different dimension if you are an indian student then who are the stakeholders and impact on corporate objectives financial and other objectives for not for profit organizations not for profit organization okay for example you are running a railroad system for example you are running a defense for example you are running a um you know some uh, state owned logistics state owned road transportation or you are um, electricity supply company or you are utility company like you know you are uh, supplying water to the uh, people living in uh, so and so local authority so your your objective is not profit making your objective is to provide service and charitable organizations there are so many charitable organizations so if you are running a charity if you are running a trust what are the objectives that you will learn here so this is your part a then we'll go to part b what is part b financial management environment so every business runs in one environment right we call it business environment so what is basically business environment various elements fact those various stakeholders various individuals various forces that affect my business for example technology customer competitor all these people will affect your business right so you have to understand the economic environment for business okay you need to understand um, like you know the industry you need to understand the economy okay then the nature and role of financial markets and institutions so what is financial markets and institutions we call bond market we call money market you have you heard these words 
bond market money market share market stock market okay and what are various institutions like you know in um, if, if you are studying cpa it is something like sec sec we call securities and exchange commission in india it is sebi securities and exchange board of india okay or you call it uh, national stock exchange you call it bombay stock exchange or you call it new york stock exchange you call it luxembourg london stock exchange all this. so what are you know various financial institutions and what is their role what is the role of sebi what is the role of stock exchange what is the role of a bank then nature and role of money markets just now i told you right money market so that you learn so a and b predominantly it is theory you will not solve many problems in a and b then c is working capital management from here you will start you know putting pen on the paper and solving questions so in this working capital management the first one is nature elements and importance of working capital management what is the uh, what is the advantage or what is the positive factor an adequate working capital contributes to the business on the flip side on the contrary if you do not have adequate working capital how your business suffers for example what is working capital you know how to calculate working capital right current assets minus current liabilities so the moment i ask what is working capital people say sir current assets minus current liabilities but that is not how you learn working capital basically working capital is the fund required working capital is the fund required to pay short term bills to pay trade payables to pay creditors so the fund required so if you do not have adequate fund it will hit your liquidity solvency so i i said on 15th i'll make the payment to my supplier if i cannot honor that date honor the payment on that particular date don't you think the goodwill will be damaged so the supplier may say sorry boss i cannot give you credit from next time onwards cash don't carry on now i am giving you 40 days credit but you are not paying me on 40th day so i am disappointed that will have a tremendous negative impact on your operations so what is the importance of working capital how can we balance profitability and liquidity when we are managing working capital so basically guys try to understand investment is of two types okay investment is of two types investment in long term assets investment in short term assets investment in long term assets takes you to capital budgeting and investment appraisal investment in short term assets will take you to working capital investment in short term assets is nothing but investment in operations of the entity that we'll see here and then inventory management accounts receivable accounts payable cash all these are elements various elements so working capital comprises current assets current liabilities so what are various current assets inventory accounts receivable cash okay we call it dsc dsc means debtors stock cash and in current liabilities the major component is trade payable accounts payable so that is what you are learning and then determining working capital needs and this is the beauty funding strategies in your board exams or in your university exams you will solve in a table statement showing calculation of working capital a current assets b current liabilities a minus b is equal to net working capital the excess of current assets over current liabilities 200000 pounds 12 out of 12 12 out of 12 here you do the same for a 12 marks question you will get 4 marks or 5 marks maximum why because that 200000 pounds how you need to mobilize into the business are you going to take an overdraft are you going to use packing credit cash credit are you going to you know have any short term bonds how you you know in in what way you want to mobilize that money what is your strategy this you need to tell them that is c and then comes d d is investment appraisal investment appraisal so this is typical capital budgeting where we see uh, we uh, apply various uh, techniques like uh, calculation of net present value arr irr payback period and all these things then 
in the next level you will take it to the inflation tax benefits risk and uncertainty all these things advanced level actually not advanced level for you maybe second level so investment appraisal techniques then inflation and taxation in dcf what is dcf discounted cash flow technique dcf stands for discounted cash flow technique then adjusting risk and uncertainty that is going to be the next point adjusting risk and uncertainty then for specific investment decisions this is also very important so should i see i need a truck to carry goods i need a truck should i take the truck on lease or should i buy the truck should i take the take the truck on lease or should i buy the truck it is called lease or buy decision similarly asset replacement decision i have old computer there is a new computer in the market i have old machine there is a new machine in the market i have old plant there is a new plant in the market i have old equipment already installed in my company factory now there is a new equipment should i replace it if i use old machine existing machine how my cash flows will be if i replace it how my cash flow will be so is it wise to replace the machine or is it otherwise wise or otherwise is it profitable or is it a loss making and then capital rationing capital rationing is a situation where you do not have adequate cash so uh, md comes to you and says say for example if pavan is cf of a company my md comes to me and said hey pavan uh, you told me na we need 500000 pounds but bro we have only 2 and of 1000 uh, 250000 pounds what can be done you should know how to do it if you don't know look at your mom every time whenever mom is running the house in the monthly expenses always or maybe majority of the times if you are not really affluent like ambani sir adani is so majority of times what happens our inflows will be less than our outflows or our revenue will be less than our expenses how to do that budgeting how to do that rationing so which one is your priority that we learn in capital ration so this is the fourth point under d then comes this business finance so business finance is basically what are various sources of finance so if i want say for example 100000 pounds if i want 100000 pounds should i issue new equity share or should i issue preference share should i issue bond should i issue debentures or just should i go to barclays bank or lloyd bank and should i borrow money or should i go to jp morgan chase or should i ask some merchant banker or investment banker or should i um, you know go for some hybrid instruments or some uh, some latest or you know uh, not classical modern sources will be there you call it uh, venture capital you call it startup finance you call it seed capital assistance or you call it um, uh, private equity okay you might have heard all these things or maybe probably euro convertible bonds foreign currency convertible bonds american depository receipt global depository receipt so there are various sources of finance and when i have equity preference debenture loan i need to understand what is the cost of that capital what is the cost of this equity what is the cost of this preference what is the cost of this bond what is the cost of this debt instrument what is the cost of this venture capital what is the cost of private equity so the next one is estimating the cost of capital then various sources of finance their relative cost and the combination of capital like you know out of 100000 uh, 100000 uh, pounds i want out of 100000 pounds i want i may make a decision like uh, how will it be if i take 50000 pounds of equity 20000 pounds of bonds 30000 pounds of bank loan 50000 one element 20000 one element 30000 one element so this composition is called capital structure so out of 100 pounds required you are bringing 50 pounds from one source 20 pounds from one source 30 pounds from one source it is called capital structure 
there are various capital structure theories and there are various practical considerations what we need to learn that comes here capital structure theories and practical considerations then comes sma what is sma small and medium size enterprises so if you are a small firm you might not have access to private equity fund or pension funds some you know mutual funds and all they will not invest in your business if you are a small business if you are running a bakery if you are running a small printing shop if you are running a small textile store how to finance your business so finance for small and medium scale enterprises also we study in you then comes f business valuations so there are various models of valuing a share valuing a tangible asset valuing an intangible asset valuing a brand okay so nature and purpose of valuation of business financial assets financial assets like instruments bonds papers paper means not your a4 paper okay promissory note kind of paper then models for valuation of shares how share can be valued then valuation of debt instrument and non financial other financial assets bond and other financial assets then efficient market hypothesis we call it emh efficient market hypothesis and practical considerations in valuation of shares okay arbitrage theory efficient market theory so many things we'll uh, deal with here then comes your part g is risk management part g is risk management so now first we have to understand what are various types of risks business risk credit risk or default risk we call or exchange risk transaction risk translation risk so there are various types of risks so first we'll try to understand what are various types of risks and each type of risk how to approach how to manage that is your point number 1 the nature and type of various types of risks and approaches to risk management then causes of exchange rate differences and interest rate fluctuations one very interesting uh, question i will ask you i will not tell the answer you think and tell me mm, when you see uh, you know if you are looking at uh, dollar versus indian rupee uh today 77 rupees is 1 dollar right if you are speaking about pound pound sterling great britain pound 103 rupees is 1 pound what is dollar exchange rate 77 rupees 1 dollar what is great britain pound exchange rate to india 103 103 rupees is 1 pound so that means which is stronger which is more which is more valuable in terms of monetary units great britain pound but which is globally accepted medium of exchange in the world in the whole world when you see when two countries are transacting do you think they are transacting in pounds if they are from europe union that is a different story okay one asian company is buying goods from one australia some uh, a company in australia so do you think transaction happens in pounds no obviously transaction will happen in us dollars why you have currency from uh, you know this uh, uh, gcc countries dubai and all you have currency uh, from this europe union like uh, your euro your pound which are costlier than dollar despite the fact that there are more currencies which are higher having higher values than dollar why dollar is considered to be the medium of exchange globally why that we learn here interest rate fluctuations exchange rate fluctuations and then hedging techniques hedging is how will i protect myself like for example fire accident is a risk okay what i what will we do insurance when you buy a car accident is a risk what will you do insurance so like that if there is a foreign currency risk how can i protect myself from that that is called hedging technique that also we learn then for foreign currency risk hedging is there interest rate risk also hedging is there 
so we learn all these things in part g risk management okay then h h is basically using the latest technology like for example you are an accountant so you completed acca you went for accounts job okay so you have a basic understanding of ifrs even not at expert level but if you will have a decent idea about ifrs and all right but do you know when you enter the markets you'll be surprised to see some accounting packages and erps there all of a sudden something will come sage 50 what you will put to your face like sage 50 i don't know finakil i don't know some erp some sap i don't know my dear friend today smallest of the ice cream vendor roadside is also using computers for billing is also using computers for accounting yes or no so basically you need to acquaint yourself both theoretically and practically to use computers extensively in financial management so it is basically computers use computer technology to effic efficiently access and manipulate relevant information like excel is one beautiful example for data manipulation for data management sorting putting it in a proper shape management information systems for everything excel is a very good tool then work on relevant response options using available functions and technology as would be required in the workplace so see how practical this is practically in workplace what is required that you are going to learn so my dear friends this is the syllabus okay and they have given two more points navigate windows and computer screens to create and amend responses to exam requirements using the appropriate tools this is basic thing okay i'm sure many of you you know might uh, have already gone through all these things especially if you are a cpa student tbs will be there right test based simulations i teach cp i teach acc i teach indian courses so this test based uh, simulations and all you need to navigate through windows and then you need to capture the data and even in strategic business leadership also a lot of annexers and you know this uh, uh, schedules will be given you need to read through and then you need to take the data you need to do cut copy kind of things so many things that is three and then presentation of the data so present data and information effectively using appropriate tools it could be your ppt and it could be your word document also isn't it isn't it so my dear friends this is the syllabus okay so this is going to be your lecture one now what we do is we will see one two um, you know sessions for pure theory understanding finance function before going to solve some problems in investment appraisal and all we'll start with investment appraisal which is very interesting but before that another one two sessions you need to learn theory after that we'll start with time value of money and we'll start with this investment appraisals or you call it capital budgeting okay so i hope you understand the scope of your syllabus i hope you understand the scope of your syllabus so we um, i will give you one uh, material prepared by me we'll do a lot of questions and also you are supposed to do either bpp or kaplan that uh, study material will be there and exam kit will be there you need to practice a lot okay don't worry this is the first day i'll take you through step by step thanks for watching we'll see you in the next session bye